Is this too high? I'm Dick Crawford and I'll be your host. <laughs> Try to stay there. All right, welcome to the behind the scenes of the Hard to Say Goodbye music video. My name is Jacob Crawford, and um, this was a really, really cool project for me personally, because it was kind of like the first big project where I've been able to bring together a lot of friends and a lot of great creatives. Huge thank you to Ecali and Elenium for believing in me to, to do this project. Um, and then, you know, huge thank you to everyone involved in the project that helped bring it together. I actually have two of them with me here today, and uh, one of them is the DP, Chris Clark, and the other is uh, the producer, Bailey Wood. So I really wanted to try and provide you guys with as much information on, you know, things we learned and, and things that we would do differently next time. And so we're gonna dive into a bit more details with them later on. So they actually came to me with a bit of an idea. They had this album art that was really cool, and it featured like this snowy abyss or had like these sparks and fire in it and they said we want to go with a music video that incorporates like snow and fire but then has some symbolism and has someone like on a journey and kind of just left me with that um, and so from there I kind of dove into it a bit deeper to really like hone in on what the vision is that we're trying to achieve and then that's when we came up with the overall story that you guys have now seen today. Okay, we're just setting up okay. Path here. okay, we are rolling. So before we dive into talking more with uh, Bailey and Chris, I want to just cover a few questions that I, I got through my Instagram. And uh, one of them was, what was it like working with the wolf? It wasn't uh, a real wolf. It was a Tamascan, which is a type of dog breed. Um, and it's actually very, very rare. Um, I, it was really cool getting to learn more about it and the owners are actually super passionate. So they're from uh, Canine Valley uh, Training Services and they're actually local um, to Vancouver or they're just outside of Vancouver. The dog is phenomenally trained. Um, I like, couldn't believe it. It would hit its marks, it would hit its eye lines for most of the part, which was really incredible and um, made working with an animal fairly easy because I had been warned that it's not the easiest thing. And cross, yeah. And walk out. Nice. Nice. My experience working with an animal for the first time was really, really positive and I would love to do it again. Frame up. We can cut. Um, call it. Oh, just keep going. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and we are set. And action. Yes, he beat our ass on that one. <laughs> we can cut. Playbacks up. Playbacks up here. Uh, another one of the questions was, was the snow fake? Yes and no. The snow on the ground was definitely real. The snow at uh, the section where the truck starts to lose control, that is all fake snow. Fake snow that was falling at least. And so that was a really cool special effect that we got to do that I had never personally done before. And we actually weren't able to bring special effects uh, to that shoot day just because it was a remote location and just didn't work out budget wise. So we relied on getting this snow machine and kind of just figuring it out on the day. Are you ready? Ready. All right, start the move and let's start the blizzard. Okay, so snow effect is in play. You guys can follow us now. Can you turn the lights on on it? Full, there we go, that's perfect. Okay, we're gonna keep going a bit. This looks great. Chris is really trying to keep out our mountains over there. Uh, which was definitely something that did cause us problems. In the future, I definitely learned to not only have one snow machine, but have like two or three of them. Three, two, one, action lockup, action box. Worked incredible, and I think it really like sold what we were looking for. But I think in moving forward, if I could have, you know, two or three of them, it would allow us to like cover the set 
better and make it more realistic looking. Oh, he's cranking it up. Crank it up, baby. It was something that we had a challenge in post-production, was like trying to make sure the snow matched in each shot because we had to be moving this like one snow machine around um, to constantly like achieve the snow look that we were looking for. So that was something that I definitely learned. Um, and going forward, I would, you know, highly, highly recommend if you're doing anything snow related where you're trying to make it look like it was snowing, use one, two or three of these machines. Um, we ended up getting this snow machine from Holly North in Vancouver. Talk about how it froze on us. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, you wouldn't think a snow machine would freeze. Yeah. It's cold out and you're trying to be like snow. Yeah. We were in the freezing cold and day one, it froze on us. And thank you to oh. Neil, who was our like, <laughs> handyman, fix it guy, he was also the camera car driver, but he could fix anything. And somehow, I don't know what he did to it, I don't know if I wanna know what he did to it, but somehow he managed to fix the snow machine and uh, get it up and running. And then we actually mounted it to the back of the arm car. And so I'll show you guys a picture of what that looked like, but um, our key grip, Trevor, was phenomenal. Um, it's actually a Versa arm, um, so it's a special manufactured arm strictly for car work, um, and it's called the Versa arm. So we're very lucky to use that, and then also very lucky that we were able to mount stuff to the back of this pickup truck to achieve those looks. So while we were driving, we were able to have snow falling in front of the camera and uh, really sell the fact that she was driving in the snow. One of the other questions I received was, how did you do the fire? Um, so huge props to the special effects team on this day because they were absolutely phenomenal and somehow managed to make a 15 foot diameter fire ring in about two and a half feet of snow. It was a propane fire ring. Um, for those of you that were asking how we had that flame in the, in the snow like that, they managed to make a, a ring of fire out of like propane hose. And then they ran the propane hose under the snow uh, back to an area where they could hide their propane tanks. Swapping out propane bottles. Just a moment, guys. Swap. And that's how they were able to achieve that ring of fire and then also keep the, the fuel for the fire hidden in a way that, you know, would kind of give it this surrealistic factor. Um, and the whole reason why we wanted to have that ring of fire was to also tie in with kind of a Lenium's theme, which is more fire-based stuff. And so it was really cool to kind of contrast the two of Ecali's being in a forest and a Lenium being, you know, this fire guy, we were able to kind of combine the two so that there was nice contrast there. All right, so here we are with Chris Clark, the DP uh, on the music video. Hi, Mom. Yeah, actually, we had a lot of fun with that one. We had an Alexa Mini uh, with Cook Anamorphics. Um, and we had the budget and the space to take three, so we took the 32, the 50, and the 100 anamorphic. Uh, all right, so we'll start at scene one, which is gas station exterior. I think it's definitely one of the most beautiful shots throughout the entire entire piece. We uh, we got there the first morning, and we hadn't we weren't able to scout it because we were out in basically the middle of nowhere. Uh, but we just had some reference photos, and we we're trying to go for like a a desolate feel. There was like strip lights on the inside of the fridge and they just played perfectly for what we we're trying to go for. We we're trying to go for like a yellowy green yeah. interior of a corner store. So we just Grimey basically look for sure. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty fun. We only had one day to shoot with the wolf and that was not on location with our first two days of shooting in Kananaskis in Alberta. Um, and we had to make the wolf look like he was following our, our lead. I think I was really surprised on this. I thought that this was gonna be a very challenging shot to get and we ran it one time and I don't even think we saw the wolf in the shot at all. It's a great take. Yeah. <laughs> Just uh, sort of note our trajectory. And I was like, uh oh, like we're gonna be here yeah. all day trying to get this thing to show up. And then we just kind of timed it out 
there was action on the, the camera car first and then action on the on the dog and we were able to kind of get up to speed by the time the wolf was up to speed and then boom, we were able to match it. Okay, camera's rolling and action. Come on dog, come on dog, what the, what's the dog doing? Where, there it is, there it is, there it is. Nice, 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 nice. Okay. Is there anyone wow. back up, Neil, and do that? Wow, that was that really, same, really nice. Uh, our driving scene, we only had the, the our one road for a day, um, and so we had to sequentially make the truck look like it had gone from blue hour in the morning and made its way through high noon and then into dusk. Um, but we only were able to shoot it for a couple of hours, so we had to, again, do the same thing with the wolf, exposed differently for different shots and figure out what would make sense to have at the beginning, what we wanted to have in the middle, and then what would be, you know, our ending. Oh, kind of just following her out to it. Okay, okay. Um, and then we go uh, wolf's uh, side, and we see Anna, like, lock eyes with it. OTS or clean? OTS, so okay. wolf in the shot. Okay. A um, little more than OTS, like more kind of like side profile. Um, and then we have shooting through the, the fire. You know, originally we had planned for these shots to be on the Versa arm. Definitely snowed more than we expected and we got to location and there was, you know, two and a half feet of snow, yeah. making it virtually impossible for our Versa vehicle to run the, the track that we wanted it to run to be able to track them in the forest. Yeah. So, you know, luckily we were able to improvise and luckily there was a, a snowmobile kind of on standby that was just happened to be there. And then Trevor, once again, did a phenomenal rigging job and managed to rig the black arm part of the Versa arm to the front of the snowmobile yeah. so that we could still achieve those like dulling shots um, when you know our talent was in the forest, which was really, really cool. Lining up running with the wolf and the snowmobile and also running with Keanu, our talent, with the snowmobile. And because you get quite the lurch when you first start and trying to like, make it a fluid motion and keep tracking on a running wolf through the forest it was definitely tricky, but we still had con full control of the gimbal. And then moving into our fire scene, you guys did some cool stuff with like the diopters. We used full diopters on this one uh, and we had them in front of the 100 mil. I mean, sometimes we had them in trays um, in front of the lens, so it would just properly reduce your minimum focus and sometimes we'd be handheld in front of the lens either forwards or backwards um, creating different stylized looks actually i'll say it if you don't mean it chris keep it i think that that's like one of the biggest things that you can be good at as a dp um, is problem solving being able to think on your toes and think creatively to get the shot is really, really important, and you guys had to do that from start to finish on this shoot. So, you know, I think you guys did an awesome job with that. Chris is incredible at what he does, and, you know, I'm very, very happy to have you involved in this project, and overall, it was a ton of fun. We got to work with literally all our friends um, yeah, for great. five days. We yeah. got to live together and, and work together, yeah, so it's pretty perfect. it was awesome. Anyways, thank you so much for, for coming in and hopping in and, and helping kind of walk through some of the, the things that we did from the shooting side. and. Yeah. Yeah, look forward to the next one with you. Oh yeah. We're cut. All right, so I'm here with Bailey Wood, who is an all-star producer, uh, overall filmmaker. You're great at what you do, and I'm so thankful that you were a part of this project because you saved my ass so many times because I came to you with this like crazy idea, crazy concept, and then I wanted to shoot it over Christmas, and then we had to you know, finish it in a ridiculous timeline, and you know, major credit to you for being able to make that all happen. Um, so if you don't know what a producer kind of does and you know how hands-on they are with pretty much everything that happens, you know, not only was Bailey a producer on this, he was a first AD, he was also like my right-hand man from start to finish on the entire project. So um, I'd love to kind of hear from you some things that, you know, you learned from the project, some things that 
you know, we should do differently, things like that, just so that, you know, people that are looking to do projects like this and do budgets and do right. music videos that are of this kind of scale, what it takes. Yeah, I'm a producer. I love putting together uh, all kinds of movies. You know, the main thing um, for me is just to be able to serve the creative. As much as I got all this logistical stuff going on, you know, you kind of have to forget about it to allow Jacob to be creative and to get whatever he needs because at the end of the day it's all about the story and what you're putting on screen it's not about any of the stuff that goes behind the scenes but we changed locations yeah. and did so many location scouts and for the first time in a decade it was the year that Western Canada just didn't have snow first we we're going to the Yukon Right. For, then yeah. we found out that it was going to cost us like twenty thousand dollars to get all the gear to Yukon. Right. So that option got vetoed. Quickly. And trying to bring a wolf to the Yukon as well, or yeah, even is any impossible. sort of dog, is is a scenario yeah. itself. And right. then we were shooting in Whistler, and Whistler decided to not have snow, and they've <laughs> it was never. Just they always have snow right. at that time of the year, and they just had rain. Like panicking, trying to find locations with snow, and then. We were blessed by having the conversation with the label where you and I kind of talked to them and then they actually ended up pushing the, the deadline and things right. later. I think the main thing, you know, as producers in this is we kind of had to make some really hard decisions at certain points where, yeah. you know, you're probably shooting next week and you're not sure if you're going to be shooting here, here or here, you yeah. know, just based on looking at the weather network. So yeah. that's not a, you know, a valid source when you have you know 25 people who are getting ready to gear up to go on a shoot at this specific date this specific location making plans to travel there and in you know and totally. be there on time and and ready to work and it's a thing where you have so many people like that but you obviously have to think about how to you know fulfill the treatment and get kind of what you need yeah, for the story without which... pissing everyone off involved in the project as a producer on a project like this you're obviously wearing a lot of different hats you know Jacob was running a whole bunch of different hats even as a director on this one and you know normally it's amazing to be able to just focus on you know one position cuz that's what we do in the film industry everybody has their specialties and kind of yeah. comes together to make something bigger than themselves but Obviously, we, you know, had to kind of pick up the pieces. Like, I was driving the gear van down to Alberta, you know, while trying to kind of coordinate everything that we're leading into on the next day. And, you know, yeah. we, we had struggles with that because we're now driving in the snow and, you know, tires are slipping. And so it, it's a very difficult thing when you have a lot of a lot of risk and a lot of people's safety and a lot of gear that you're kind of looking after. And that's that's one of the hard things because when you're thinking about the video as a whole, you're like, great, you know, we just, we film all this stuff and it's gonna look great and we, we come home at the end of the day. But there's also all these little things that you and I had discussed and you know, what are the little things about having to do a drive like this? You know, you gotta be experienced in kind of every different vicinity to understand anything that can come at you within yeah. your shoot. And so we had hours and hours of discussion, you know, what if this happens, what if this happens? And so we're prepared for everything along the way. We also had another producer on the project. His name was uh, Wayne Chung and him and I kind of worked together and we worked together a lot um, producing and directing and, and putting together uh, a lot of film projects. But he's also a, a lifesaver of, you know, and, and just understanding life in general, which is such an important thing when you're dealing with so many yeah. people on a day-to-day -day basis. It's, you know, it's so crucial to have somebody who can find the solution at the end of the day, because that's all we're here to do. Here. Nicely done, everybody, nicely done. Um, let's reset that uh, once more. All right, guys, resetting to one. We're gonna we'll do one set. here. Yeah, Alrighty, everyone, okay. we're gonna try one out. We need that. Everybody clear this light like here. 200 bucks on the <laughs> 200 bucks. <laughs> Somewhere like 10 G's. <laughs> uh, so what about to get a stair rolling? Fuck it. On your cue, Bailey. Uh, uh, no, no, no. In action! Alright, so that's a wrap on Hard to Say Goodbye music video for E. Cali and Elenium. Um, pretty crazy concept. We just had this massive fire ring in the snow. And uh, we had a wolf, we're all finished now, and I'm stoked for you guys to check it out. Any questions regarding this project, some of your projects, um, future projects that we're doing, or just want to ask anything film related to myself, uh, Bailey or Chris, feel free to hit us up on Instagram. I'll have the handles somewhere around here. Um, but yeah, please reach out, we'd, we'd love to help. And I mean, we are learning just as much. So if you have advice for, for us or can think of something that maybe we wanna, wanna hear, by all means, please share.